Uh, good morning. Uh, greetings from BMS College of Engineering, Bangalore. Uh, this is the uh, fourth module on uh, on convolution sum. So far, uh, in the first module, we saw how to we derived the convolution sum, and we saw different methods of com computing the convolution sum. The next module, we saw properties of convolution sum. Third module, we saw some more properties of convolution sum, and we moved into the uh, frequency domain by getting introduced uh, to the discrete and Fourier transform. In this module, uh, though it, the title is convolution sum, uh, we shall see a special type of convolution. That is, suppose I have, uh, say I have a signal x of n, and I want to convolve it uh, with, say, x of minus n. So I am performing the convolution of the signal uh, with not itself, but with the uh, inverted uh, signal. So then when I do this, uh, I, uh, I end up in performing, actually performing a correlation. Correlation. So last night I was just thinking, having done convolution, let's also uh, quickly have a, a short uh, look into correlation because this, this is another uh, concept extremely useful in uh, signal processing applications. So now, uh, so we shall focus on uh, the correlation. Uh, correlation. Uh, again, there are two types of correlation: the autocorrelation, the autocorrelation, uh, and the cross correlation. Correlation. So since we are dealing with discrete time signals, let us first uh, take up the autocorrelation. autocorrelation. Now, how do we define autocorrelation is suppose I have a signal x of n and if I want to compute the autocorrelation, say rxx of n, uh, this is given by the convolution, the convolution of x of n convolved with x of minus n. And let's take up an example. Uh, let's take, uh, take an example because it's always uh, becomes easier uh, to understand the concept when we take an example. Let's take a sequence, say, x of n, uh, given by, uh, by, say, 1, 1, 1, 1. Say it is 1 for uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. And it is 0 otherwise. Let us say this is my signal, x of n. Now, I want to perform autocorrelation. So, how do I perform autocorrelation? I need to take my signal x of minus n. I need to take, I need to take the signal x of minus n. I need to first get x of minus n. And what is my signal x of minus n? I have... This is going to be 1 for minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and uh, 0 otherwise. Now, let me, uh, let me resort to graphical convolution of these two because I find that uh, convenient in this particular example. So, how do we perform graphical convolution? The first step is to sketch my one signal, 1 for n, 0, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, and 0 otherwise. This is my x of n. And what is the correlation? We are trying to do autocorrelation. And as a, as a graphical method of convolution, I need to flip the second signal. So let me flip the signal. So I had x of minus n. So I will again flip it. x of minus of minus n will again become x of n. So I am flipping I flip x of minus n because if to perform graphical convolution, I need to flip the second signal. So then I have it as a function of n. So again, I have it like this. So I have it as 1, 2, 3 and 0 otherwise. So now uh, 
to to compute my uh, convolution i need to first uh, find the uh, the product the sum of the product so now to to get y0 uh, to get the uh, the uh, the convolution of uh, of so at zero if i if i compute y0 it is one uh, one plus one plus one the product uh, the product is a uh, four is four now if i want to compute y1 i need to shift uh, shift x of m to the right by one and so what will i get is uh, if i if i if i sketch it and this is going if i shift it to the right by one i'll uh, i'll have one the this 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 would become a zero and this moves so one one into one plus this so one plus one plus one is going to become a three now if i want to compute at y of two once again i shift i shift x of m to the right by two and then i have only two values so i get it as two and next finally at three is going to be a one and then zero but this is for the right now similarly i can compute the left shift if i if i shift x of m to the left by one once again i'm going to get a get a three and again left shift it to the left by two shift it to the left by so minus three minus two minus one and this is what we get so what we observe so this is this is my autocorrelation this is my say r x x of so my autocorrelation, I have taken a signal xn and I, and I just convolved it with x of minus n. When I perform this convolution, what I get is the autocorrelation, rx x of n. And what's an observation? It is this, this autocorrelation is always an even function. An even function of n and it has a maximum. It has a maximum at the origin. It has the maximum at the origin and this maximum is equal to the energy of the signal and given by sigma x and x and square so this is an observation of autocorrelation so when i when i perform the convolution of the signal uh, with with uh, x of minus n i get autocorrelation so that is why i thought uh, let's uh, uh, let's take uh, as an application extension in the series on uh, convolution i thought let's take this let's see one uh, one more uh, example. Uh, uh, let's take uh, another example, uh, say second example on autocorrelation. Say my sequence Xn is uh, 1, uh, 2, 3, 4. So now I have my, I have my signal Xn given by 1, 2, and uh, so this is one two three four and to do uh, and I, I need to sketch x of minus n and then again uh, I need to sketch x of minus to do a graphical convolution, I need to sketch x of minus n and again flip it. So let me let me sketch it directly. So x of m is again going to be the uh, going to be the after flipping, and again I need to flip it for performing convolution by a graphical method. So I have it as again one, two, three, four. So now if I multiply to what is my uh, what is my y of uh, if I want to get my y of zero, the r uh, r x x of zero, I need to find the product, uh, find the product, and then take the sum of the product. So when I when I multiply, uh, when I multiply, what what do I get it now as uh, m? One into one is a one. Two into two is a four. Three threes are nine and four fours are 16. Nine. And my Rxx of R, the, the, the sum, sum of this product is what gives me the value at n equal to zero. So one plus uh, nine, 10, or uh, 10 plus four, 14, 14 plus 16 is the 30. So I get my Rxx of zero. 
as 30. As 30. Now, similarly, if I want Rxx of 1, I need to sketch, I need to shift, shift my x of m. I need to find the product to compute Rxx of 1. I need to have my original signal x of m, uh, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. And I need to multiply it by a right shift of right shift by 1. So which is going to be uh, if I sketch uh, x of I, I shift it right, right shift by one what I get is uh, one two three and the product, the product if I take the, so R, Rxx of 1 is going to be the sum of the product. So 2 into 0, 0 plus, I mean, uh, yeah, the first one is 1 into 1 into 0 is a, is a 0 plus 2 into 1 plus uh, 3 into uh, 2, that is 6 plus 4 into 3, that is 12. Uh, 12 that is 20 that is 20 so I get my Rxx of 1 as this similarly if I compute uh, Rxx of 2 I need to I need to sketch x of m minus 2 so let me let me sketch x of m minus 2 I am going to get get uh, 0 0 1 2 3 4 and if I compute the product of x of m and x of m minus 2 uh, I get rxx of 2 as uh, uh, 1 2 3 into 1 like first term is a 0 second 1 into 0 plus 2 into 0 uh, plus 3 into 1 uh, plus 4 into 2 So that gives me 11. And the last one, if I want to compute Rxx of 3, I need to sketch uh, x of m minus 3. And then when I take the product, I am going to get it as uh, 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 4 into 1. And that is going to be a 4. So now uh, putting all these results by, uh, we know that the autocorrelation function is going to be symmetric. So finally, I have my Rxx of m given by uh, first value is 4, then 11, uh, then 20, 30, 20, uh, 11, and 4. And this is my origin. So when I sketch the, sketch the autocorrelation function, uh, this is what I get. N. So it's the 4, uh, then, then it's 11, uh, then 20, uh, then 30, not drawn to scale and uh, everything else is zero. So no matter which sequence I take, I take my autocorrelation uh, irrespective of any signal that I take, any sequence xn will always result in my autocorrelation function x of n being an even function of n and being symmetric, I mean that is symmetric about the origin and and also having having the maximum, the maximum at the origin, and which is given by uh, the maximum value at the origin, Rxx of zero, uh, is just simply given by the energy of the signal or x of n whole square. So let's take uh, say one more example, uh, say using uh, using math. Here, here what, uh, what I try to do is, instead of uh, taking a simple sequence, I'm trying to compute, uh, compute the autocorrelation of a cosine signal. So I'm taking my cosine function 
and then I am I am computing the cosine signal here. I am just defining 50 values in the interval of 0 to 1. I am taking a cos function and taking it. This is my signal xn. Then I am also trying to flip it. The so I am flipping the signal xn and then I try to plot the flip signal. Then I am performing autocorrelation. Although MATLAB has an inbuilt uh, autocorrelation function. Let me perform convolution. Convolution of my signal xn with the flipped signal. So we said correlation is nothing but convolution of xn with x of minus n. So I, I perform this convolution and then I try to plot the result. And of course, we need to define uh, define the limits because uh, we need to compute from the time limits for the signal. So let's run this function where I have a cosine signal. Let's run it. So this is my autocorrelation. My autocorrelation of a cosine uh, cosine wave. Uh, when when I uh, plot it, once again we see it is it is even. It has a maximum value at the origin. Origin, and this is my uh, signal which is uh, flipped. So my flipped signal goes from zero to minus forty nine, and whereas my original signal goes from zero to forty nine. Zero to forty nine. So if I if I change the signal, let us say I take cos of four pi t, uh, say plus sine of uh, two pi t. So now I'm changing my signal, and let us see how my autocorrelation is. See, I still have the maximum at the origin and uh, even function of n. My this is my autocorrelation. This is my uh, flipped signal uh, going from 0 to minus 50, the flipped signal. And this is my original signal xn, xn that is in this map. So now, so what, what we find is uh, whether I take any, any signal, so hence we have, we have seen uh, as the third example, with the help of MATLAB, we took the third example as a cost function, as a cost function, and and we found that the autocorrelation, the R X X of n, uh, is uh, is is still so. This is what our autocorrelation function that we found. Uh, for a cosine uh, cosine signal still being symmetric with the maximum value being at origin and then when i took a took a sum of two cosine wave sine under cosine function i still got it so this is an autocorrelation function that is uh, that is useful now the, let's now see what is cross correlation the uh, the cross the cross correlation so if I have a signal, uh, signal say x of n, and if I have say another signal y n, y n, uh, the cross correlation uh, r x y of n uh, is defined by the convolution, convolution of x of n with y of minus n. So if I take the first signal and convolve it with the uh, flipped version, that is y of minus n, I get the cross correlation. Similarly, if I do r by x of n, I, I need to convolve. <coughs> I need to convolve y of n with x of minus n. <coughs> So let's uh, uh, let's take uh, another another cross. Uh, let us see what is cross correlation. If I have two different signals, say x n and y n, the cross correlation of x with y is given by uh, given by the convolution of x of n with y of as an example, let us take an example. Let us say xn. 
to say one, one, one. And let us take uh, my yn. Yn is say, yn is say, uh, x of n minus one. So what we have is, and let us say we want to compute the correlation of y with x. Uh, the problem statement is given a sequence xn and given another sequence yn, I want to compute the cross correlation of yn with xn and yn is very closely related to xn, uh, which is uh, which is a delete. So I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have uh, y as delete. So let me first sketch the signal. Uh, let me sketch uh, sketch yn. Uh, what is yn? X of uh, n minus 5. So xn, so n minus 5, so I need to delay it by 5. 5, 6, 7, 8. So I have four, uh, four values. Four values, so x of n minus 5. So what happens at 0 will now happen at 5. So 5, 6, 7, 8. And the value is all 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. I have the values at zero. So this is what my uh, yn is. And I also have my xn. What is my xn? My xn is given in this manner. One, two, three. One, two, three, and everything else being zero. This is my xn. And I need to uh, perform the uh, convolution of uh, xn with the flip. So yeah, I need to flip xn and for graphical convolution again I need to flip. So the, the step for flipping is avoided when I want to do a do a correlation. So let me uh, let me start computing uh, computing r by x of n. r by x of n. So if I take the product now, if I take the product of these two immediately the first value is going to be a zero. The product is a zero. Next, I shift it to, to the right by one, I still have a zero. I shift it uh, by one, uh, by one, it's a zero. <coughs> <coughs> then I shift it by, by two, then I get it as a one. If I take the product, it is one. Then I shift little more, so one plus one, I get a two. Then I shift little more, I get a three, and then a four. <coughs> four, five, and then this. Five, six, seven, eight, and then all zeros. Now let's observe this result. What we have taken is, we have taken a signal yn, which is equal to x of n minus 5. And then I perform the cross correlation of x y, that is x of uh, y of n convolved with uh, x of minus n. And when I do this, I get a result which has a maximum, r y x of x maximum at 5. So, uh, the cross correlation of the same signal. If I have a signal and if I have a delayed signal and if I perform the cross correlation of these two signals which are closely related, I observe a maximum and the maximum occurs at an instant which is equal to the delay. That is, suppose I have a sequence, uh, say x of n, and I have another sequence y n, say y minus n naught, and I perform the autocorrelation, say r y x of n, then my result is going to have, it is going to be the same because the two signals are same. My result will be an autocorrelation of the two, but the autocorrelation shifted by, so this is going to be Rxx of n delayed by n naught. <coughs> so the autocorrelation result delayed by n naught is what we get when I perform this type of cross correlation. And this, uh, so if I, if I simply have a signal and if I continuously keep performing the autocorrelation, and if I find a maximum, from the location of the maximum, I can tell what is the delay. And this uh, this, this property of cross-correlation actually have has a lo lot of application in radar. In radar, 
in in tracking flying objects wherein we we send we send an rf pulse the pulse hits the target and comes back comes back and the delay between my sent pulse and the received pulse is directly proportional to the distance of the object from the uh, from my station and hence when i compute this auto correlation and i look at the maximum so my time delay in in uh, between my sent pulse and the maximum will it will give a direct indication of the distance of the flying object from the uh, from my uh, location so in radar and many other applications this property of auto correlation has significant uh, application and hence uh, and uh, correlation and a cross correlation are nothing but convolution very closely related to convolution so let's take one more example of this cross correlation uh, using matlab <coughs> so here i have uh, i am again taking a cosine signal cosine signal and then i am i am taking another signal yn which is delayed delayed by uh, delayed by uh, say 50 samples and then i'm going to perform the cross correlation of the two and so now I, I, I should get a maximum and let us run this. Uh, so I, but I'm not using the inbuilt function. Once again, I'm always performing convolution. So let's run it. So this is what we have. So let me, let me first, uh, first look at my, uh, my signal. Uh, this is my, uh, my original signal Excel, uh, which goes from zero to 50. And what is my uh, signal yn? My signal yn is the same signal shifted by 50 units. So x of n minus 50. My yn is x of n minus 50. I have given a time shift of 50 units for my signal xn. This is what I, I have my yn. And then I compute the autocorrelation. And, and when I compute the autocorrelation, what do I find? We have, we have the result of a autocorrelation shifted by 50 units. So when I look at my auto cross correlation, here I've done a cross correlation of the shifted signal with X and I get a maximum. By looking at this maximum, what I find is there is a delay and uh, between the delay is equal to 50. So when I perform cross correlation, I can also identify the, uh, the delay. And this, uh, property of uh, correlation and cross correlation have uh, taking uh, taking simple uh, simple example of uh, say xn is uh, 1 2 3 4 uh, and uh, x core xn comma xn see this is the this is the command the inbuilt command for performing uh, uh, performing uh, correlation is x core. The MATLAB has an inbuilt command, or we get the same result even if I perform convolution of xn with flip lr. So we can perform correlation by suitable convolution. So in the next module. Uh, in the next module, we shall uh, we shall take up uh, the topic discrete Fourier transform.